my baby Marcia. Oh no, don't do that. What's up guys, welcome back to my channel. So I'm gonna try to get through this video with this little guy right here and then I'm also gonna try to get through it without getting emotional. Um, of course, I'll say that right now and then I'm gonna have to like pause a million times. Um, so today I'm gonna tell you guys our, or not our, but Kai's birth story and sort of what happened, um, you know, during that time. And for those of you who have been following along, um, you guys, and for those of you who are new here and just kind of popped in to see what this video was about, so I'm going to kind of backtrack it a little bit. Um, back in August of last year, I found out I was pregnant um, with an IUD, which was a super, super scary situation um, because... At that point, I was actually being told that I was going to miscarry due to a subchorionic hemorrhage. I'm not going to go too much into detail on that. I will share those videos down in the description down below if you're interested in kind of following the journey and, you know, um, see what led us to this moment here. And it's important to know that story because it kind of um, has to do with what happened throughout um, the birth. So... Again, I'm going to try to not get super emotional about it just because I just said that and I my voice broke a little bit. So, all right, hold on. I'm going to take a breath real quick and just say, you know, thank you guys for tuning in and then also for tuning in into the actual birth vlog that you guys know. I did share little snippets of what happened. Um, you're just staring at me. Am I just blabbing away? Maybe a trigger warning sh is important because um, it was pretty traumatic. There's a lot of stuff that happened that, you know, if you went through something similar, it might trigger you or, you know, just so you guys know. All right, so in one of my updates, I told you guys that, um, you know, the subchorionic bleed that was discovered um, is basically like a clot and it was a big, like the size of a peach and it, you know, it, it, it made me start bleeding, hemorrhaging, clotting, and that's what took me to the ER to find out that I was three months pregnant when I went in, and that was something that was super, super scary, again, because I was told that I was going to miscarry. I told that, you know, my baby was not going to um, make it, and it was just, excuse me, it was just something that was super hard for me to deal with at that time. I did wait a little bit before I started sharing that with people, um, just to where I got to a point where, you know, I was, I was okay because I was not okay. There was a lot of risks and I expressed it and it was something that I was worried about throughout the entire pregnancy. A couple of the risks that came with that hemorrhage were um, the potential for, um, the potential for a preterm labor, the potential for my placenta abrupting, the potential for um, giving birth to a stillbirth baby, and those were my thoughts all along my pregnancy even though I was really trying to enjoy after we were kind of cleared um, those were my worries the entire time I feel like any little thing that happened um, I was so uh, anxious and nervous anytime I went in for blood work anytime I went in for any appointment I was very um, you know nervous we did have ultrasounds throughout the entire pregnancy pretty much. Um, we were starting out weekly and then we went to bi-weekly ultrasounds just to make sure that that um, hemorrhage was not getting any bigger, which it wasn't. Um, to a, At some point it actually did disappear from what I was told was that it wasn't there anymore. Um, so, you know, it all all looked good. I actually did end up going to labor and delivery several times, um, you know, because I actually wasn't feeling him move. With everything that was going on, anytime something changed, because he is very, he was very mobile. He definitely showed me that he was in there having some fun. So anytime his movement slowed down, I got very scared. Um, so there were, there were several times where I ended up at labor and delivery just to make sure that, you know, everything was good. And so I, I went in probably like 
three times before I actually got induced. I went in there three times and when I got there, sure enough, you know, he was fine. He was moving. They were doing like the stress test on him and everything, everything was good and I was just sent home. Um, there was one time where I went in there because I was having really, really severe pain like in my, um, on my abdomen, like my upper ab abdomen, like on my belly. And I just, I mean, it brought me to tears. It hurt so bad and I didn't know what it was. Um, so, you know, I called and I wasn't having any bleeding or anything like that. So I called labor and delivery. They told me to come in and they monitored. We couldn't figure out what the heck it was, but it eventually went away. So, okay. <laughs> so we went home and, you know, I just basically was listening to my body a lot more than if I, I feel like if, you know, we hadn't gone through these things already from the beginning. I was getting a lot of blood work done and then every time I went to get a UA, every single time something came, um, like when I got my lab results, there's a little red um, exclamation point saying there's something off, you know, and I feel like every single time I got results, it was like during the weekend and, you know, I was like the whole week trying to, or the whole weekend trying to wait and I'm over here Googling stuff and that's the worst thing that you could do, obviously, when you're going through stuff because you're just going to make yourself, yourself feel worse and that's what I was doing I was just panicking myself and just you know things were just <laughs> I was just very very anxious um, of like probably like the month before he was born everything just was making me super anxious and like I said all these all these test results and stuff and then I don't remember at how many weeks I think it was like 36 weeks or something like that you get this group um, strep B test or something that checks for like some bacteria. I've always come back negative and then this time around it was positive. Um, so that was another thing that came like on a Friday and it was already late. The nurse didn't get back to me so I'm sitting there like the whole weekend worried about it because I'm googling like what you know what could happen. There's like the risk of infection um, for the baby and you know if I don't get just all these things and so finally when I went to my appointment they told me not to worry about it all they had to do was just give me antibiotics or like penicillin or wh whatever it was um be f like four hours into labor or gosh everything's so foggy I, I can't remember exactly what they told me but basically just reassuring me that it's super common it's nothing that I did it's nothing that I can control it's just a bacteria that's there um you know and sometimes it's it's you it's um active I guess and that's when it comes back positive so it's nothing that you know I did or anything like that um, and it was just basically making sure that we got antibiotics before he comes through the birth canal because that's what's going to cause that infection that could be super super serious for his health or even his life so that was another thing that just you know was on top of everything that was just like accumulating on me and I'll tell you guys this that uh, probably like for several weeks I was feeling very very anxious here we go <laughs> I was feeling very anxious very um, worried nervous for the birth I had already I already knew that we were I was gonna be induced at 39 weeks I had already talked to my doctor about that that was the safest thing that um, just being in a more controlled environment just you know I was I was um, nervous because I already have been through an induction and that was horrendous it was the worst pain of my life because my epidural didn't work but anyway so I was just very worried at that point everything that I had that I was getting done was coming back normal even if the ranges looked off to me as long as the doctor said that they you know everything was looking good um, and I I told my husband I said I know they're telling me that he's doing well and everything looks good but I still feel worried and I feel like something is gonna happen to me during that delivery and I'm scared <laughs> and you know obviously what my husband does is he just tries to reassure me that everything's gonna be okay and you know kinda talks me down from that ledge of fear um, but that's just that was something that I couldn't shake I just felt like something was going to happen to me I kept thinking about like who's gonna take care of my kids and um, you know like all this stuff that I do that my husband like doesn't have a clue about like how is he gonna take care of all that stuff so I was just thinking I, I was in a very like 
I can't even describe it, but obviously it was it was not good. And even though I was trying to just kind of go with the motions and you know go with whatever the doctors were telling me and stuff. So um, just because I feel like when um, all of this happened to begin with, when I first found out I was pregnant and like all of that, I just looked into all these possibilities and I don't know if it prepared me or or what so I don't you know <laughs> I don't know if it did a disservice or or maybe it just it made me more aware of what my body was telling me another thing that happened was that my hands and my feet started getting super itchy and then I felt some itchiness like on my legs and stuff um, and so I addressed that with my doctor and I looked it up <laughs> again another thing that could go wrong um, so it's called cholestasis and it basically has to do with the liver function when you're pregnant and that the only way to get rid of it is for the baby to be born and it can also be super dangerous to me to him um, it could cause the preterm labor, it could cause stillbirth, it could cause all these things. So I'm just sitting here getting all these lab, lab, like lab work and just all this stuff. Um, I don't know if I had shared this with you guys also, but um, my, my iron levels had been super low and I just, you know, I had a discussion with my doctor and we ended up doing um, iron infusions and we talked about it because she said if you end up having like a blood transfusion for some reason, um, you know, you're really going to need this. So we decided to do that. We did the iron infusion. So I feel like I had a whole bunch of stuff done throughout this pregnancy. Um, so the cholestasis, we did blood work on it. Um, they said it was going to take maybe a day or two, but it ended up being like five days. So those five days, I was just like, oh my gosh, like what are the results? So when they finally came back, the results came back normal. Um, but because I was still having that like itchiness and it got to a point where I couldn't like even sit at the doctor's office I was just like itching at my palms and like my feet were super itchy and she said even though your results came back normal we're gonna repeat the test again um, just because it it we're gonna repeat it again um, just just to double check and then I think at that point um, I had gone back into labor and delivery because again I was not feeling him move and I remember telling the nurse when I checked in like just it does something doesn't feel right like it doesn't I just I can't describe it I don't it doesn't feel normal it, on top of that I had um, my mucus plug had had I lost my mucus plug I was feeling cramping and I lost it twice so it's I feel like I don't even know so I was feeling a lot of cramping and then I was just feeling all these things that um, so they had me go in there and just get all this stuff done and repeat that test for the for the cholestasis to make sure that the levels hadn't gone up um, after that visit to labor and delivery I think I had my appointment a couple days later or something like that um, and so I talked to my doctor and she said because you cannot control the itching on your hands it's telling me that there's something going on even though your last results came back normal um, she said that could change by tomorrow like and you know we wouldn't be able to know that for days because those those results take a while so she said the probably the safest thing to do right now is to induce tomorrow which was um, February 16th um, and so we kind of went through the pros and cons of both things. She said, "Yeah, it's bringing him a little bit earlier, so we would be he's two week, he would be two weeks early." Um, she said, "But I would much rather you see him on a on a like ox with an oxygen mask with a CPAP for a few minutes than if you wait and you know you could poten potentially be delivering a stillbirth baby because." again that condition can be super dangerous the, on the only way to get rid of it is to deliver the baby and I don't know why that happens I feel like I was explained they explained it to me and I don't remember um, so of course you know I said that's that's what we have to do like I don't want to wait so five five o'clock in the morning um, I got scheduled to be induced um, and so then it just kind of really like it really hit me you know like oh my god like finally I'm gonna get to see this little baby boy who's been causing all this trouble I mi amor I don't even know how to explain it I don't know what was happening through or what was happening in my mind but again I couldn't shake that feeling that something was gonna happen to me and it was a very emotional 
thing when um, Milani got picked up by my in-laws, so she was gonna spend the night over there. And then, you know, my older sons, my older, my oldest son drives, so you know they stayed here, and then they were just gonna go with their dad the next day. But when Milani left, um, <laughs> or when she was leaving, gosh, I said I wasn't gonna do this. Give me a second. Hold up. All right, so when she was leaving or before she actually before she actually left I had this feeling to like just record my last Interaction with her just holding her like holding her um, before before I Couldn't anymore. I guess you know because I'm gonna be holding a newborn all along or all After that not that I wouldn't hold her anymore, but it's just different because she was my she's my last baby at that time So I was just holding her and I decided to just record that little interaction with her when she got picked up I just got super emotional because it, you know I wasn't gonna see her in a few days because the hospital didn't allow visitors and so I'm not gonna see her and and then I feel like at some point she as she was leaving she felt it also because she got really emotional too so my good my goodbye to her was just <laughs> was rough um so she left and then right before I went to bed um I did the same thing with my boys I went and I went in their room and sometimes they look at me weird sometimes they don't want to be on camera and <laughs> You know, I respect that, um, but I just decided to just do the like the video selfie and just, you know, give them some hugs and some kisses and tell them that I love them and, t you know, just kind of let them know that, like, even though things are going to change again, like, they're my boys, they're my babies, you know? Um, so I recorded that. My my oldest son was a little more <laughs> receptive towards it and the younger one, he was just like, what the heck, mom? What What's going on? How come the stars come to shine when it's dark from so far away? Show us where we are. What makes the sun go to sleep every night? And what's it dreaming of? I wonder. So anyways, um, that was that because I, I felt like I needed to have that for some reason. And then um, that night again I started feeling not well, like I started getting nauseous and then I had a really like sharp shooting pain on my upper belly again and of course I go back on Google and I'm thinking, you know, like what could it be? So I called labor and delivery and I told them, you know, that I was scheduled to be induced at five o'clock in the morning and that I'm feeling these things. I'm feeling like um like sort of like contractions but I'm also feeling a really sharp shooting pain on my upper abdomen and I'm nauseous, blah 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 blah. Um unfortunately the nurse told me that they were really short staffed so that if I did end up going there they were probably going to send me to a different hospital because they don't have enough nurses to take care of all the patients that they had. Um, so if I did end up going you know that was was going to happen or if I decided to just head on to the different hospital myself. Um, so I decided to wait and I don't know why I felt like maybe if I maybe I'm just nervous or something so I decided to just go to sleep and you know hopefully feel better which I did I started feeling better like later in the night um, and so that was that was another concern of mine like oh my gosh what if I get there in the morning and then they're overstaffed and then they have to reschedule my my induction completely or they send me somewhere else where they don't know anything about my history so um, I did go, we, so we finally got into labor and delivery at 5 o'clock in the morning or a little bit before and everything was normal. Everything started out really calm um, and I will include that video in the description also if you guys missed that um, birth vlog. Um, so I got there and if you guys decide to watch that, you know, that's great too. That way you kind of get like kind of what was going on. Um, so five o'clock rolls around, we're there, and then they started the Pitocin, which the Pitocin, um, <laughs> that one, it, you, I started feeling the contractions pretty much right away, and so I think it was like 
nine o'clock, 9.30 or something like that, where my doctor walked in and she said, how are you feeling? Do you need the epidural? And I said, I mean, I'm feeling them, but it's nothing that I can't really, I mean, they're, they hurt, you know, but it's nothing that I can, like, I can't deal with right now. She said, well, if you're feeling them, let's just do the epidural. There's no sense in you feeling it. You're going to get it anyway. So just so you're comfortable, you can get a little rest and, you know, we go from there. And so she said, once you get the epidural, then around lunchtime, like 12 or whatever time, um, she was going to come in and break my water. Um, so they came in right away, like minutes later, they came in with uh, the anesthesi anesthesiologist came in um, and we did the epidural and stuff. I could feel a lot of pressure and I, the contractions were coming like super close and they were really intense. And I was just watching the monitor too, um, just trying to keep track of those contractions. And I just felt like, oh my gosh, like that one was really, really intense. Um, Cause I was already having some that were like pretty intense, but not too much or not too close together before the epidural. But like, as I was looking at the monitor, I was like, oh my gosh, thank goodness. I'm not feeling that completely. Cause that was awful. Um, and so then um, she came in around new, like 12.30 and she broke my water and it was, you know, whatever. Um, <laughs> I was a little uncomfortable, but um, nothing too bad. And from that point, everything just kind of shifted. I was keeping an eye on his heart rate the entire time. Um, and the, the one thing that I remember them saying, like, the heart rate needs to stay between 120 and like 170 but his had always been around like 150s um you know 160 maybe but around that range so that was something that i was keeping an eye on and i noticed that you know it was kind of like going down and then going up and going down going up but then all of a sudden it dropped to like the 120s and it wasn't coming back up um so the turn the two nurses that i had they kept coming in and like saying you know everything's fine but we just want to make sure we try everything before we there's nothing else to try so this is the part where everything started getting kind of hazy for me like i feel like i was in the twilight zone or like i blacked out or um like i remember things but also it just feels like a dream you know um so again those two nurses they kept coming in and out and like changing positions changing my monitor just doing everything that they could um and they were um they at some point they lowered the pitocin and then they had to do other stuff um and then all of a sudden um i've they come in and they tell me to like get on all fours like so they change my position to be like on my hands and knees like facing the back and my butt is literally sticking out and I'm just you know like oh my gosh like this is I was I was starting to panic and um, the way the machines were like where they had my IV and like all of that stuff it was kind of blocking um, the the monitor where it was showing my like the contractions and like his heart rate and all that and I kept trying to look because um, I didn't want to take my eyes off of it just so that I could keep track of how he was doing um, and at some point like I remember looking at my husband and I like I was panicked and I and I started like crying and I said I, f I feel like it's gonna be an emergency c-section and he just said you know just try not to jump to that yet let's see what they say and then all of a sudden like five nurses like rush in and then they're trying to like do all these things and once my doctor rushed into the room I should I said like oh shit <laughs> And I remember her just doing all these different things to try to like move me and again I was being tossed around like in all different directions and then I just remember her like aggressively like um like just like rubbing my belly like super super aggressive almost as if she was trying to like get his heart to pump um I know I had tissue here but I don't know where it's at so sorry but I'm gonna use your blanket um but yeah, she was like super aggressively like just rubbing my belly and like as like I said I feel like you know She was doing that to try to get like his heart rate up and I just kept seeing it drop So I saw it go from like the 120s and then they went to 110 and, and like the lowest that I saw it was like 80 something um, So I knew that like he was in trouble <laughs> And then um, once they like roll me back over and they took the, the monitor off of my belly and she actually had to go in with a probe, she had to go inside and then put a probe on his head. 
to monitor that. And then once it was just going down, like she just, I, she said, get the O R ready. And I'm trying to remember like all these things, but she just rushed out. And then the nurses were kind of like rushing to like get certain things off of me to be able to roll me out. And then I was still the, at that point I was on my um, uh, hands and knees again. And I just remember like they were wheeling me out and I, <laughs> I don't know, I told my husband, I'm like, can you please cover me? Like, can you put a blanket on me? And then... Shoot. <laughs> okay, I'm back. <laughs> so, as the nurses were rolling me out, my husband started um, coming after and they stopped him. And they said that he couldn't go in with me until they knew, like, what was going on. So, um... He just kind of froze and it was, like, one of those things, like... Like... Almost like what you see in the movies, you know, um, I just, I just looked at him and like, he looked at me and in my heart I felt like that was the last time I was going to see him because I just felt like something was, something was going to happen. So anyway, they just started rolling me to the OR, um, they had to go through like an elevator and stuff and the whole time I'm just sobbing, um, you know, because I didn't jeez what the heck all right so um once they rolled me out of there they like they took me into the or and i just remember seeing all the lights and i'm just sobbing and i'm just like i just i don't know um like all these thoughts that were crossing my mind like i thought you know i gotta keep an eye on his his heart rate and i was thinking about my kids i was thinking about my husband i was thinking about like just all these things right so I just remember like I saw like 20 people or 20 medical staff just running around trying to get all these things done my doctor coming in and she's like still like aggressively like rubbing on my stomach and like just like really like not rough but just aggressive you know and trying to get him to react and then just telling like remember her telling the staff to do different things and then I remember she came around this side and um I feel like they were like grabbing my arms to like strap me I don't even know like if they were strapping me down or what was happening I just like was seeing all this stuff and I was like seeing the panic um but like very I I can't even describe it like I could feel the panic in the room and I remember like one nurse that was coming onto this side and like holding my hand and then my doctor coming in over on this side and she pinched my belly and she asked me if it hurt and I told her I said it doesn't hurt but I can feel you pinching me so my epidural was done at that point I didn't you know I wasn't numb um, and so they called the anesthesiologist and then I remember her asking like why it was taking him so long and again I'm just like crying and then I'm looking over at the monitor and just seeing his heart rate just like go down and go down <sighs> so like when um the anesthesiologist finally came in i remember like looking at him over like they put the freaking cap on me and they you know did whatever they could to like get me ready and he was like asking me questions like it was just like a regular chit chat normal routine and then I, I heard my doctor and I saw her reach over and said you need to put her down now um, the baby has been under for more than 10 minutes and so like he kind of rushed to do whatever they were doing and I remember just looking over at the heart rate monitor and it just it just kept, it just went down gosh darn it <laughs> And then I remember them putting um, like an oxygen mask on me and telling me to breathe because the baby needed oxygen, I needed oxygen. And then I remember the blue curtain coming up and then they put like the other the other mask on me and the anesthesiologist saying that, you know, I was gonna I was gonna go to sleep and everything would be fine. So I had this nurse on my side and she was holding my hand and I kept looking over at that monitor and I feel like once I saw it go down like to the lowest, I just thought that he was gone. And my last thought too, like before I fell asleep was that I'm not gonna wake up. So, that was so scary and I just remember 
like I remember saying like out loud I said please God just <laughs> and that was it <laughs> all right so once I came to like I, I felt like I I felt when I was waking up like I remember like my throat hurting or feeling like I was gonna throw up and then and then I woke up um, the very first face that I saw was the anesthesiologist and the first thing that he said was like the most reassuring thing because I thought I thought that the baby hadn't made it so the first thing he said was you have a baby boy and he's doing skin to skin with dad so that made me feel like it just I don't I don't even know what what I could feel at that point I was so like I was just out of it um and then um I remember as they started wheeling me I thought I saw my husband and I like I said oh my gosh you know like he was able to be there the way that he tells me is that once when I saw him I like I like reached for him to like hug him and I do remember that but I thought it was like my imagination I thought I I couldn't I didn't know if it was real or not um because then like right after that they took me to like the recovery room so as they were wheeling me out um the nurses that were were taking me i like i told them i said i thought uh, i thought i was gonna die um and they said well you did you did lose a lot of blood you had to have a blood transfusion and platelets and cryo and a lot of blood products to like bring you back um and so at that point I didn't know how to like process it because I was very very high <laughs> um, I know they like gave me like fentanyl and I mean I got the bill um, just the other day and it was like sixty thousand dollars or something like that and I saw like the breakdown the breakdown of everything that they that they did um, it was kind of confusing at that point because those nurses were just kind of like chit-chatting along and just kind of saying like you know the stuff that happened and I asked like my throat hurt really hurts and they said that I had a breathing tube um obviously because you know they had to put me down I wouldn't be able to breathe on my own um and so then once I once they took me out they actually had to do x-rays on me um twice so like the first one that they did was to make sure that they didn't forget something in there um they had to go so fast that they couldn't even like do prep on me all they could do was do the iodine and like cut me open and do everything super fast um again you know because it was so urgent and he had already been down so so um long and what they call like what his condition was is like bradic cardia or something like that i don't know how to pronounce it but it's basically he was he was not getting any oxygen and his he was suffocating you know he was <sighs> so um when they told me that like once um let me i feel like i'm skipping around now um so they had to do an x-ray on me um and uh the, actually a clasp in my um, on my gown showed up on the first one so they had to come come back and do another one when I was awake so they had to do like a, an x-ray make sure that they hadn't leave, left any instrument or anything in there because of how quick they had to do it and then um, I've if, I remember just shivering like feeling really really cold and like just like I couldn't control I couldn't control myself and I feel like I'm not even looking at you guys I'm just kind of like um Anyways, they, um, I was sh shivering and they covered me and like, um, they had to put like these compression things on my, on my legs to like get circulation going and stuff. And then once they rolled me into the actual room where my husband was, he was in there with my son. Um, and so, uh, like I said, and you guys can watch it in that last video, the video with the birth vlog. Um, you can actually hear um, a couple of the nurse, like one of the nurses asked me if I knew what had happened or if they had told me what had happened. And I feel like I heard bits and pieces from different people. Did they tell you what happened over there, Mama? They just said I lost a lot of blood. And yeah. I don't know. So the doctor tried to pull baby out, there was like clots and bleeding just coming. Like you, it looks like you abrupted. I mean, your placenta came apart from the uterus. Okay. Like before it's supposed to. Yeah. It caused a lot of bleeding. Oh. Um, and they don't always know why that happens. Um, 
Dr. Pike was thinking maybe because you have that subchorionic hemorrhage. hemorrhage that yeah. something with maybe with that caused it. Yeah. Um, but it was just, it was unexpected completely. So, mm -hmm. I mean, we expected because baby was down, mm -hmm. you know, we need to get him out, but we didn't expect all that bleeding to happen. So, I, so. I, I thought I was going to die, honestly. Like, when I closed my eyes, I just. Uh huh. <laughs> Yeah, you got like four units of blood, you got plasma, you got lots of blood products, okay. platelets. Yeah, but your vitals are looking stable and your labs are looking pretty stable, so. Okay. okay. Yeah, we gave you a lot of stuff to get you tanked up though. Because <laughs> <laughs> you lost quite a bit. But he just was good when he came out. He was good. He just yeah, he didn't struggle. Yeah, he like five minutes of oxygen. Okay. Um, via CPAP. Okay. And then he <clears throat> fabulous. Yeah. A little fighter. But it's just, I, I think, um, up until now, I don't have, like, the complete picture. You know, I still feel like certain things are missing, um, that weren't really discussed. I don't know. I, I can't even, I can't even describe it, but, um, so once I went in there, like, the nurse told me what had happened. She said that, um, my placenta abrupted. And actually, eventually, my doctor also came in and told me, you know, what, what happened. Um, so when he, he was down for a while, like, he was, he was in super distress. And I feel like if it, if, if I would have gone into labor anywhere else other than that hospital, like, we wouldn't be here for sure. Um. So I think everything kind of led up to that moment and I feel like all these little pieces of the things that were happening to me and my body and things that were happening throughout the pregnancy were kind of leading to that moment. Um, but I feel like if I had done anything differently or not listened to what was going on, like I said, you know, I, I feel like our story would be completely different. It was a really, really close call for both. Um, so what she told me um, was that once the baby came out, like he obviously needed help breathing, so he was on the on the um, um, oxygen and CPAP for about five minutes, and then they said that he did really well, he was fine, and to kind of stabilize his or stabilize his vitals, they did skin to skin with my husband, so they brought him in. He was not able to be in that room with us. So he was actually is still in our room this entire time for like two hours or however long it took for them to bring the baby in. He didn't know what was going on. He didn't know how I was. Um, so that made me really sad. And that was another thing like when they when they were rolling me back to recovery, you know, and they told me that that Kaya was good. Um, I said, but like who's like who's with my husband? Because I was worried about him. Like nobody was there with with him. Um, you know, like. Anyway, um, so yeah, they said that he did, he did fine once they put him on, um, the oxygen, but one of the doctors or nurses, like, when my husband went in, um, to, to the room to do skin to skin, and then he had to cut the umbilical cord and all that stuff, um, he said there was, like, um, several different people there, and then they were on, like, a Skype or a Zoom call with, like, another, uh, pediatric doctor, and they were just, like, trying to figure out, you know, like, what his status was um and he did say that one of the either the nurses or the doctors said that like when he came out like they do an apgar apgar score i believe like um they have to like it's either one through eight or however however many points they do and based on like his color like when he came out he was like a one and she said that she doesn't usually she said that she didn't doesn't usually cry but that when she saw Kai like she started crying because she thought that he that he was <laughs> but <laughs> once he got on the oxygen like everything started improving <laughs> and that's what I mean when I when I say I hear bits and pieces you know like um, sharing like what I heard from this nurse or what my doctor told me or what my husband ex was told and just stuff like that so like kind of putting everything together is it's it's difficult because like I don't know exactly you know um, 
so then I guess that once when he came out I started abrupting and what they saw was that like oh the I had clots coming out like my placenta had actually abrupted and that was that first um, worry that I had from the very beginning that that was gonna happen throughout the pregnancy um, I was worried that it was gonna happen before that um, so I don't know if those like the pains that I was having um, you know up until that point if maybe that was my plus my body telling me like something's going on here but Kai definitely was letting everyone know that something was wrong um, and that you know unfortunately he had to have <sighs> whatever happened to him to kind of notify everybody that like hey mom's in trouble um so i lost so much blood that they had to do four units of blood um and i lost about 2500 milliliters of blood which is about half of like your blood supply in your body and i mean i'm sure um with a c-section i read that like you lose about a thousand milliliters of blood but i lost like 2500 which was a really really big deal and you know when i came out i was like super pale and it was just i took a lot for for you know a, a big amount of blood to get me back to where I was and um, that much blood loss could cause shock and your organs fail and you know you you can die <laughs> um, and so I definitely feel like somebody uh, was watching out for us <laughs> and obviously he's meant to be here for a reason <laughs> and he just endured a lot um we both did um and that's pretty much what i was told <laughs> um not just my own feelings of like something's wrong something's gonna happen i'm gonna die um it was a really really close call um and not that anybody's gonna tell us yeah for sure you both almost died um you know but it's it's it was put in a way to where it's not that like it it doesn't sound that harsh when they say it you know what i mean um and i feel like um the reassurance of the medical providers like the nurses like even now i just had my six week postpartum appointment um just two days ago and the nurse she's both and then the follow-up doctor you know they both said mm, holy cow like you guys went through the ringer um there were there was one nurse that tried to minimize um what kind of happened um all the nurses were great everybody there was amazing i feel like uh you know, even on my my two week follow up appointment, I talked to my doctor and she explained more of what happened. I think that the placenta was, um, it already had this weak point because of that hemorrhage that I had from the beginning. That it it just, you know, it gave out and uh, unfortunately what happened happened. But fortunately it happened when it did. Otherwise, you know, like I said, we probably wouldn't be here. And um my doctor she said that they train for that they do drills to react exactly how they reacted and i feel like i i have to thank that team of medical staff for how they reacted especially my doctor man she was on it she was a rock star um but yeah there was just one nurse who kept kind of minimizing like what had happened and she said no and i remember my mother-in-law um i was only allowed one visitor for a little bit not during the you know um and it was my i i told my husband that i wanted my mother-in-law there um and my mother-in-law used to be a nurse at that hospital and um she, I, she knew she knew that nurse and she was adamant telling her that i didn't lose that much blood and that i had only gotten two units of blood and all these things you know and i'm like what the hell like why is she saying that stuff like why is she trying to like minimize and she even said like well i know i know it was like um, urgent but it was still just a c-section and I just couldn't believe it like and not only that but she tried to take away the receiving blanket from me <laughs> when we were leaving the hospital and I was so mad like out of all the things that she said like that were minimizing our experience and like the hell that we just went through her trying to take that receiving blanket from me just threw me off the handle like I was so mad um, and then she was just like, um, I don't know. I don't even want to talk about her. She's not going to take my time a day. Um, 
but yeah, that was just like, it, it, everything was just so surreal. Um, you know, I, I kind of had to come to terms with like what was happening, but also, or with what happened, or could have potentially happened, but also just try to like really be present and enjoy because he is here. Um, and that's pretty much the story of um, Kai Amari's birth and my super, super traumatic um, experience with it. Um, I feel like I'm forgetting stuff. I feel like I'm missing stuff. But, you know, um, there are, we've shared it with our families and stuff. And I feel like everybody has like a different reaction. Um, I feel like a couple of my brothers, who I didn't expect their reaction to be the way that it was, but it like, and then like other comments that we get like oh well um at least you're here or you know like uh, look in the bright side and it's like I get it but I feel like overall like the whole recovery from a c-section was rough um this was my first c-section I've never experienced anything like that um especially with how quick they had to be and how rough I I'm assuming because my body was sore for a long time but there's not only that but also obviously that emotional and mental healing that I clearly have to go through because I could not get through this video how I said I was gonna get through this video and that's okay you know I I share what I share and I always try to be um, transparent and just I know that like not everybody has had the same experience but at least I know that like some of my experiences might help someone heal also and I know um I know they will help someone and that's why I tried to be <laughs> as open as I can be um but yeah again you know like and even my husband I know like I don't know what he felt we've talked about it but again we don't want to get into that deep deepness of it but eventually we will um and I know like I'm gonna carry this with me for the rest of my life and even though some people will say like well you didn't die and you <laughs> you know what I mean it was a pretty serious thing and um I yeah I just um I definitely need to um heal from this and again you know my husband I don't know he's more closed off on like talking about how he feels and um but I know that that probably was very scary for him too thinking that like he was not going to see his wife and child um but overall I just feel so so lucky um and blessed really you know I know it's like a cliche thing to say like you feel blessed but I really do and I know that he's meant to be here for a reason and he's a little miracle baby <laughs> like everybody calls him um and he's a sleepy boy and who farts a lot and eats a lot he's a big old chunk and I'm just over the moon and just appreciate my family so much more um not that I didn't but you know um <laughs> So that's, that's where we're at. <laughs> um, I Like I said, I don't know if I forgot stuff to share or if there's, you know, whatever. But that's the gist of it. And I wanted you guys to kind of know because you've been on this journey with me. So um, that's it, you guys. I am a mess now. I was hoping that <laughs> I don't usually I don't get enough time to like do my hair and makeup these days. And I was hoping I wasn't going to ruin my makeup today, but I did. And that's okay. Um, but I want to thank you guys for like sticking around. I know this was maybe like really long, but, um, thank you guys for following our journey. And you know, there's a lot more to share also. Um, so, and then, yeah, that's all. Thank you guys so much. And <laughs> I'm going to go clean up a little bit. I'm a little sweaty also. So, um, no, oh, my baby, my Oh no, don't do that. <laughs> Alright guys, thanks so much and I'll see you guys on the next one, okay? <laughs> Bye.